Welcome to Tabo Eminent Channel. The first lunar rover, known as the Lunar Roving Vehicle (LRV), made its debut during the Apollo 15 mission in July 1971. While many people remember the iconic footage of astronauts driving across the moon's surface, fewer know the complex, often secretive story behind its development and the remarkable people who made it happen. Thanks for watching. Request you to subscribe the channel. The visionary origins. The idea of a wheeled vehicle for the moon predates the Apollo program. As early as the late 1950s, NASA and military engineers were already sketching designs for lunar mobility. But it wasn't until the Apollo program began that the need became urgent. Early missions, like Apollo 11 and 12, had limited surface exploration because astronauts had to walk. NASA realized that to reach more distant geological sites, a vehicle was needed. General Motors' Secret Role One of the untold aspects of the rover's history is the role of General Motors, GM. GM's defense subsidiary, Delco Electronics, partnered with Boeing, which held the primary NASA contract. Engineers at Delco, many of whom had previously worked on military vehicles, secretly developed the LRV's guidance and navigation systems, an essential feature since GPS didn't work on the moon. Their work had to be both ultra-reliable and incredibly lightweight. Apollo 15, the first ride. The first LRV was deployed on July 31, 1971, by David Scott and James Irwin. They covered about 17.5 miles, 28 kilometers, on the moon, collecting valuable samples and taking panoramic photos. What made this mission extraordinary was how much farther astronauts could explore. Without the rover, such geological diversity would have been impossible to reach on foot. Challenges and triumphs Some lesser-known issues included, the front steering system failed on Apollo 15, but the rear system kicked in, saving the mission. Dust was a constant menace. It gummed up parts and made visibility difficult. The astronauts weren't professional drivers and terrain was unpredictable. Yet the LRV never tipped over. Legacy and what's left behind. Three LRVs remain on the moon to this day, Apollo 15, 16, and 17. They sit silently, solar bleached and coated in lunar dust, frozen monuments to human ingenuity. The LRV proved so successful that it inspired modern lunar vehicle concepts being developed by NASA, SpaceX, and private aerospace firms today. The untold human story perhaps most overlooked are the hundreds of engineers, machinists, and test drivers, many working long hours in secret or under tight deadlines, who brought the rover to life. One unsung hero is Ferenc Pavliks, a Hungarian-born engineer at GM credited with much of the rover's design. His team even had to simulate lunar gravity on Earth using pulley systems and aircraft parabolic flights, just to ensure the rover would work in one-sixth gravity. Long before a rover ever touched the moon's surface, NASA engineers knew the challenge of mobility on the lunar terrain would be unlike anything on Earth. The moon had no roads, no atmosphere, and gravity only one-sixth that of Earth's. Every step an astronaut took during Apollo 11 and 12 was an exhausting effort, especially in a bulky pressure suit with limited oxygen and time. It became clear, to truly explore the moon's rugged surface and collect more diverse geological samples, the astronauts needed wheels. But building a car for the moon was no simple task. In the late 1960s, NASA handed the project to Boeing, known primarily for aircraft and rockets. Boeing, in turn, quietly partnered with General Motors' Delco division, specifically a small, elite team led by Hungarian-American engineer Ferenc Pavliks. The team worked in secret at GM's Santa Barbara facility, racing against time to produce something that had never been built before. A battery-powered electric vehicle that could fold up like a lawn chair, weigh less than 500 pounds, survive the vacuum of space, and drive over boulders and craters without flipping. It would have to be light, strong, and intuitive enough to be driven by astronauts wearing thick gloves and helmets. There was no room for error. The result was the Lunar Roving Vehicle, or LRV, an open-frame, four-wheeled marvel made of aluminum alloy, with wire mesh tires wrapped in titanium treads. 
It looked fragile, like a large mechanical insect, but was deceptively tough. With its twin electric motors and articulated suspension system, it could tackle the moon's unpredictable terrain. Even more impressive was its navigation system, built entirely without GPS. Instead, it used gyroscopes and odometers to help the astronauts track their position. For all its technological sophistication, the LRV was controlled with a joystick, making it feel simple to drive, almost like a video game. When the LRV was finally tested and approved for flight, it flew aboard Apollo 15 in July 1971. Astronauts David Scott and James Irwin had trained on Earth using simulated moon environments, but nothing could prepare them for the surreal experience of driving across an alien world. The moment Scott unfolded the rover from its cramped compartment and took it for a test spin, he described the sensation as, like driving on ice and sand at the same time. Dust flew, the wheels gripped just enough, and for the first time in history, humans were driving on the moon. Apollo 15's rover carried the crew over 17 miles of lunar terrain, more than 10 times farther than previous crews could walk. It let them collect rock samples from distant highlands and photograph geological formations otherwise unreachable. However, not everything went smoothly. The front steering failed early in the mission. But the engineers had designed a backup, rear-wheel steering. With a flick of a switch, the astronauts were back on course. The rover's design had saved the mission. Two more LRVs followed on Apollo 16 and 17, expanding human reach across the moon. On Apollo 17, astronaut Gene Cernan unofficially set the moon's land speed record at 11.2 miles per hour. The rover bounced and skidded across the gray dust, its movements watched closely by millions back on Earth. The engineering breakthroughs in lightweight design, battery technology, and navigation laid the groundwork for future Mars rovers and even modern electric vehicles. Yet, the names of those who made the LRV a reality, like Pavlix and his team, are rarely mentioned in history books. Their story is one of innovation under pressure, of testing ideas in back lots and wind tunnels, of risking reputations on a dream of movement on another world. They didn't just build a car. They built history. Conclusion The story of the first lunar rover is more than a tale of science and machines. It's a testament to collaboration, innovation under pressure, and the daring spirit of exploration. Without it, astronauts might still be hopping short distances, and our understanding of the moon would be far more limited.